Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Dot com and welcome back to Flying Solo where you guys submit questions and I give you my answer. So if you'd like to submit a question, you can go to bit.ly slash frocritiques. Please follow the directions and also be sure to put your name in there so I can talk to you personally. So why don't we jump into the first question. Philip1121 asks, Hey Jared, so don't want to bother you. I know you're a busy guy, but what's your opinion on black and white photo with some objects put back in color? Question mark. I have some people saying I should edit some photos like that, but I don't think it's professional at all. Any tips or thoughts for me? First off, don't start off a question by saying, I know you're busy and I don't want to bother you because if you did believe in that, you wouldn't be asking me the question in the first place. Now, this is called flying solo, so you ask questions, I give you answers. And honestly, if you were to do a black and white and you were to do selective color because that's called selective color, I would probably be yelling at you. So your brain is telling you the right thing by not doing selective color because it absolutely is cheesy. It doesn't look good. It doesn't work, at least in my opinion. So if I were you or anybody else out there, I would not do selective color ever. I don't even know if there's a situation where I would use selective color. Now I know we've seen it in blockbuster films to make a particular point and the point was made in that World War II movie by Steven Spielberg. That is a totally different ball game but in everyday use if you were to shoot a wedding and you just made the flowers and the roses red and everybody else was black and white, to me that just yells cry, uh, trying way too hard. So I'm curious about what you said in a recent vlog about the first 24 hours of a YouTube video. So my basic question is, if you post a video unlisted for, say, one day, does that start the 24-hour period, or would it start after I made it public? So this is a great question. Now, for anybody out there who puts up videos on YouTube, you've seen the option that says uh, private, unlisted, and public. Now, the first 24 to 48 hours are the biggest, most important time for when you put up a new video. What YouTube is doing as soon as you flick that switch to public is they, they don't have any information to go off of. So they shoot it out there to your subscribers. They try to push it out to as many of your people as possible. And the more people that watch right away and within that first 24 hours, that's letting YouTube know that, oh, this is either a good video and people are interested in it because they're commenting, they're liking, they're sharing, they're watching it all because watch time is important. Or if it isn't doing too well because not a lot of people are clicking on it, well then you start to watch everything just tank and fall off within a couple of hours uh, and that's really how that works. So the part of your question is what about unlisted? Okay, well unlisted, the clock starts ticking as soon as you go to unlisted as well, just like if you put it on public. So if you make it unlisted and you share it to friends, that clock's ticking and the YouTube algorithm, though it's not gonna be able to share it in search, it sees that it's public, well, it's not public, but it's, it's, it's live for somebody to watch, so the clock is ticking, and you're hurting yourself if that's happening, and then you decide to make it public after the fact. It makes it much harder for it to get that organic reach because YouTube doesn't see it getting a lot of action. Now, that's coming from a lot of different YouTubers that I've talked to, as well as YouTube. They have all said that if you go unlisted, the clock starts ticking. So, the rule of thumb out there is if you are ready to put a video public, make it public. If you're ever going to do it unlisted, then put it up unlisted if you want to show somebody first and then delete it, remove it from YouTube and then re-upload it, re it and then get ready to put it public whenever you're ready. What's up, Jared? My wife is a blogger. I used to have a Sony a6000 with a kit lens, and for the purpose of getting my photography skills and photo quality to the next level, I recently bought a Canon 5D Mark IV with a 51.8 lens. With a budget of $1,000 more or less, what would be good glass to get good portrait slash street photos with, and what other gear would you recommend just for photography, not videos, and if my budget needs to go up some hundreds of dollars, that's okay. Okay, too. Looking forward to your answer. Thanks a lot for what you do. Your videos are the reason I'm getting serious about photography. 
So this is what I like to see when you're asking a question about what gear you should buy. Knowing what camera you have, what lenses you have, what you like to shoot, what you're gonna be doing with it, and what your budget is, is really important. So in this case, if you have a thousand bucks to spend, you have a 5D Mark IV, you have a 51.8, you kind of need a catch-all lens, and my, my recommendations on full frame, 24 to 70, 70 to 200, then you throw in there the 11 to 24, but all of those are over 2,000 plus dollars, if not 3,000 for that 11 to 24. So with a budget of $1,000 to 1,200, you could look at a Tamron or a Sigma 24 to 72.8, that's one option, or Canon has two different options that I could recommend, a 24 to 105 version 1 2.8, uh, sorry, 24 to 105 version 1 f4, or the brand new one, which is around $1,100, which is a 24 to 105, uh, F4 version two. Now they both have IS for image stabilization. So this is going to be good for running and gunning, for street photography, for pretty much a catch-all. You could do portraits, but I like longer lenses like the 70 to 200 on the 200 end at 2.8 for shooting portraits. But in, in this budget, if you wanna get the most bang for your buck, I would recommend the 24 to 105 F4 either version one if you wanna save money or version two if you want the latest and the greatest. And I know you said you're not looking to do video with it, but if you do end up helping your wife shoot video, this is a very versatile lens for video because you have your 24, you have your 105, but better yet, you have that IS, which gives you the stabilization you need if you're running and gunning or moving around, especially with the dual pixel AF that you have on that 5D Mark IV. So what do you guys think? What would you recommend? Feel free for any of these questions to give your opinion or to give your answer down below in the comments. And if you'd like to submit your own question, you can do that at the link up on the screen. Also over on that page, you can submit websites for rapid fire critiques, as well as your best 10 images for rapid fire critiques. Now also the last thing I wanna say before we jump out of here is if you love the videos that I create, the free pieces of content, then can I ask you to support us, support what we're doing to help us continue to put out this free content. If you would like to pick up any of my four educational guides, you can go to fronosphoto.com slash guides to get a free preview of all four of those. And if you decide that you like them, well just know that you're gonna learn quite a bit from them and also you're gonna support all the free content and information that we continue to put out into the world. To check out the last Flying Solo, go ahead and click on the screen right now. Don't forget that to hit the subscribe button on YouTube, like, share, comment. If you're on Facebook, Sherry McSherrisons are always welcome. And thank you guys for submitting your questions. And that's where I'll leave it. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.